Hello, folks. This is a quick video. I, as we can tell, you know, the Supreme Court is doing its bullshit again, you know, attacking women's autonomy, as they always do, of course, um, because they they just want to, <laughs> let's be honest here, it's, a, it's another way for this sort of patriarchal system and sort of to control women's bodies, you know, you know, they have enough that women have to put up with. Now you just basically just want to control them at the end of the day. So... What do I see here with uh, my issue with the whole abortion thing and what's happening currently at the Supreme Court, which is very clear they're really trying because, you know, the Mississippi bullshit where they're trying to ban abortions after 15 weeks. So, you know, how do I feel about the situation? Now, again, it's all bullshit because at the end of the day, if they want to use an argument about biblical reasons, not really. And to be honest, I've always said, you know, the Catholic Church is, you know, it's dubious at best when we talk about their stance on abortion. Because, you know, to be honest, it's probably, it's dog shit, but that's just my opinion. Um, not to not to try like an anti-religious person, but, you know, I can't buy arguments about abortion when, when I read biblical scripture. You know, my brother, you know, this is what he does for a living. And... You know, because his field intersects, ancient years and history intersects with biblical stuff. And, you know, it's like, yeah, abortion was, the Bible knew of abortion. They didn't say anything about it, actually. They never said that the woman had to be punished or anything. Matter of fact, they're pretty vague about it. Matter of fact, highly neutral. So this sort of interpretation that somehow this is a new phenomenon or that this was only, always biblically written it's bullshit. This is something that came out from the seventies, likely the fifties came from evangelical thinking to Catholic church doctrine. Which didn't really amount to anything really. Cause can you really take the Catholic church seriously? I mean, this is an institution back in the 1500s where you had cardinals who were able to have kids. Like, do I need to bring up Rodrigo Borgia? Um, <laughs> Even though those stories are mostly fabricated about him. But regardless of the fact, yeah, you, you had a pope that had a son. Cardinals had lovers back in the day. That was considered normal. You know? I mean, Rodrigo Borgia literally married a courtesan, which would have been a, a more high-class sex worker. But that was his wife for how many years? Technically, they weren't officially married quote unquote, under, under the guidance of, you know, religious scripture, but they didn't really give a fuck because, oh, wow, look at that. When you're in a position of power, you can kind of get away with that kind of stuff. People are going to turn a blind eye and be like, um, not see no evil, speak no evil, blah, 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 blah. There's a, you know, so the Catholic church, personally, I really can't take seriously on their position on abortion because they take it from the Bible and scripture and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the bible doesn't really say anything about abortion so you know the bible's kind of basically just vague about it um renegade cut most people have seen this video on it which has completely debunked that whole point about it being biblically literal it's not it never was so the point is absurd my only issue that i have is that It is a sexist and patriarchal reason why they're going after these, going after women. It is at the end of the day. I know some people are going to be like, no, that's not what it is. No, it's what it is. It's what it is. You know, I know some people are going to dance around and be like, hey, man, I'm against abortion for this, this, this. And I'm like, dude, at the end of the day, this is about patriarchy and control of women's bodies. If you can't see that, then I can't fucking help you. Uh, but that's what it is at the end of the day. There's nothing you can do about it um, in terms of its... Uh, you know, actual structure for itself. So, my bad, it's like, the fuck was that? Um, so, the point that's being made here, in essence, I'm sorry, folks, just so, someone just walked past the car, and just like, the fuck, man? Um, <laughs> anyhow, I'm going to keep that in the video, I don't give a shit, because, you know, that's just, but, point still stands. Um, the thing is, is that that's what it is at the end of the day. If you, if you don't 
see that, right? If you don't understand and see that, then what the fuck? I mean, I can't help you. Um, I can't really help you with that. On a personal level, I can't help you. Um, if you can't really see the difference. It's about controlling women's bodies in the day. And punishing women for having sex. It's always been about that. This is why, personally, I think the argument of life begins at conception is a fucking trick. Yes, I said that. I think it's a trick. It's a trick rhetorical. The reason why I say that and why I don't believe it, and I think it's bullshit, when people use arguments like, well, life begins at conception. Bullshit. It doesn't begin at conception. You place that as an argumentative trick to basically say the minute sperm and egg meet, boom, child is conceived. I don't believe that. Because right there in that rhetorical, you've literally erased the men out of the conversation. You basically given a double whammy to women, basically saying, well, the sperm has entered the egg. So thus men have magically lost all responsibility on the matter. And then boom, we self eject ourselves. And it's like, well, women, fetus is in your body. The cells I make, I, I'm, I, listen, I know the names, I'm just speaking really fast, but you know, the zygote is in you, it's all there, anyone with, you know, uteruses would know, boom, there you go, it's yours, your problem, you know, I'm talking about mostly from cishet perspective of why they're doing this, right, um, because I know I know, you know, uterus is not universal to women and, uh, a, you know, penis is not universal to men. I know that stuff. Okay. I understand that. I'm not forgetting my fellow uh, folks there, um, which is interesting because this is, this is another thing that I find interesting because I think they're also very restrictive. That's interesting. Cause I don't know if they even brought that conversation up. W what about trans men in that situation? I mean, what, what, what are they going to say? Knowing these religious fundamentalists, I, I, you know, I'm not going to get into that, but, <laughs> you know, but knowing these religious fundamentalists, they probably wouldn't even validate that existence to begin with. So, you know, um, cause I'm thinking about it more broadly cause I know like, you know, so I'm thinking about it in a more broad sense. Um, but at the end of the day, these laws are just created to punish people with uteruses at the end of the day that's what it's all about and um that's why i always find the argument of conception to be a joke because I, when i see it i'm just like funny the cishet men that produce sperm cells make it you know <laughs> make it more um to not include you know what i'm trying to say here but it's interesting with cishet men interestingly enough they're excluded from the conversation with that sort of rhetorical trick. Cause I've always found it bizarre to me when people say, well, life begins at conception. And I'm like, I, I, me, I've always thought to myself, this is a trick. This is a rhetorical trick to basically expounds all responsibility to the person with the uterus. This is why I've always, you know, I made this joke with some radical, with some abortion activists. And I always tell them, why doesn't, why doesn't life begin when the sperm is forming in the dude's ball sack? <laughs> I mean, I've always, I mean, sorry if I said it in a graphic fashion, but um, it's like, why does it not begin with the emergence of the sperm cells? So... Does that mean that men are, I mean, if that is true, men are committing massive amounts of murder through masturbation. Am I right? But they're not going to say that because at the end of the day, that that's sort of like, oh shit, we, uh oh, cats out of the bag. Fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, the patriarchy gets revealed un under the cover and it's like, fuck, you know, you know, patriarchy, you know, you peel back the curtain and patriarchy is like, oh fuck, you, you found me. You know, because th then you know what it's all about at the end of the day. You know, because the other stuff, it's all covering. It's all, you know, it, it's, it's all, it's all covering up. It's all, you know, basically smoke screening to what really is at the core of what this is all about. Right. This has always been about 
controlling women's bodies. And to me, these patriarchal, sexist, sometimes religiously fundamentalist people and and men who engage in this stuff, this is their last bastion of control of women that they have influence over, especially in the U.S., right? Because they lost it with everything, right? These right-wingers, they, they lost to gay marriage because it's legal. Though I am a little bit concerned... Because I don't know if they have the, I don't think they have the audacity to be like, we're going to overturn um, gay marriage. I mean, if, if, I mean, they might, though I think they understand it's going to be massive backlash. I think this is why they have decided to focus primarily on abortion rights, specifically currently at this current moment. Because if they go after LGBTQ people again, besides what, you know, the trans panic, they're basically going after trans people, which is the current thing right now, but they can't overturn gay marriage. I mean, they just can't, it's long a Latin now, but they can't do it politically. It's not viable for them because I'm telling you arguments, it's not the two thousands anymore. Even then it was crumbling because arguments against gay marriage are just absurd arguments because you have to basically argue, basically the concept of marriage itself has, has an institution and you you end up falling into holes of contradictions to the whole point of what marriage actually is. <laughs> you end up falling into a whole bunch of problems, right? And what the what that represents in of itself. Right? Even though personally I don't believe in marriage. So that's why they can't use that argument. But going after abortion rights, they can play around with people's feelings because there's been this indoctrination within certain Christian faiths on this idea of abortion, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the Bible doesn't really say anything about it. And the Bible doesn't really preserve any punishment for people who do have abortions. They actually don't really care about it. So they're either misinterpreting the text horribly because, you know, it's the Bible here. You know, if you read the King James Version, that's a translation of a translation of a translation. The words that you think it says isn't what it says. Because these are words that they're using for an English translation, so they take out stuff that were meant for other languages, you know? So, at the end of the day, you know, Renegade Cut, I would suggest his video, he made a great point about this, uh, about the biblical, you know, authenticity of this idea of being anti-abortion. It's not there. So, that's why I say this is a very recent thing that comes about during the 70s and 60s with mostly like evangelical movements. I know originally it was the Catholic Church that was highly concerned about this, particularly with Catholics. Um, because originally Protestants had no issue with abortion in the 50s and 40s. They had no problem with abortion. So this comes much later. It could be because of influences of other things. But um, now, I think some of this... <laughs> The history about abortion has some highly racialized elements within it, where it's about essentially white women being baby making factories for the quote unquote white race. I have a good feeling there's a lot of it that has to do with that um, underlining because because of the abortion stuff, there's some underlying racism. Highly underlined racism. If you if if you really uncover what's really going on here, um, because you know the fact that Protestants didn't have an issue with abortion for a number of years, and then the influence. I mean, Catholics they've always had that issue with abortion, even though it's basically mild biblical misinterpretation. Though I would say generally they were the true believers in it. They would basically fall for the believing in it. But evangelicals and early Protestants, they didn't really give a shit about it. So that comes to ask that comes to very interesting questions about why all of a sudden they they become they've cared about it lately. And you know, I think my friend said it best, there is some racialized elements with it where it's like we got to maintain the white majority of this country. Or there's some dark eugenic stuff going on where we don't want too many black people. I don't want to go there, but it's a disturbing thought to think about. I just thought about it right now and I'm like, 
maybe there is some really sick white supremacist thing highly involved in that. Where it's like, well, we're going to have to go after more poor women of color. But it's interesting because now they're they're mostly contradicting themselves because it's like if they <laughs> if these guys wanted to. But again, I think this is a bizarre attempt because I think they realize the population demographics of the U.S. is changing. So I think there is a bizarre. You know. We got to maintain the white race low key. We got to maintain the white Protestant stock, quote unquote you know, which is diminishing. Um, I don't know if it's true or not, but it is a thought. It is a thought, folks. <laughs> it is a thought. Because abortion has a lot of complicated uh, things and layers around them. So, you know, these right-wingers who are currently in the Supreme Court who are basically using whatever they can to essentially just be like... I know, Corny, I know Barrett said something pretty ridiculous about abortion and things of that nature. And again, I think that comes primarily, again, these are personal things. I think this comes primarily from their bizarre personal beliefs. I do know Brett Kavanaugh is a piece of shit. Um, probably comes from the fact that he's Catholic. So he probably takes a lot of the Catholic anti-abortion doctrine stuff, which again is dubious at best because it's a fucking mistranslation as per said in Renegade's, Renegade Cuts video, he made a great explanation of that. Um, it's a mistranslation at the end of the day that they're that they're borrowing from. And I think politically, this has become a thing lately due to the 70s. I think the 70s and the 60s, um, personally, the rise of the sexual revolution, there is some elements that I think comes from that sort of backlash from that. Um, in terms of the history of anti-abortion stuff because you look back at the history it's just like protestants didn't care about it they're just like yeah abortion's fine we don't care about it right well, as long as you know it's on the hush hush but they didn't really give a shit they're just like yeah you have an abortion we're not gonna make a big deal about it right and um now it was much more dangerous back in the day it wasn't as publicly available and it was highly restrictive unfortunately um, because if you watch movies like, you know, Revolutionary Road, you guys know what I'm, you, you, you guys understand where I'm, where I'm going at with this, <laughs> especially movies like Revolutionary Road. So, you know, I feel like some conservatives actually want to go back to that era where it's, I mean, if that's what they want, that's more dangerous to what they're trying to accomplish. So for me, there's a lot of complicated aspects about this whole abortion thing and I've started sitting down and considering like some of the arguments and, you know, I've always, I've always was, was puzzled by the, it begins at conception argument. I've always been puzzled by it because I, I find it interesting, you know, any cishead man with a, with a, with a penis that, that has a, you know, sperm, interestingly enough, they're excluded from that automatically. It's funny how like life doesn't begin when the sperm is first formed. I don't know why they don't go far enough with it. It's interesting they choose the conception part when the sperm and egg just, you know, I find it funny. And I think personally, I find it, I think it's a, it's a rhetorical trick to, in a way to be like, well, it's all women's responsibility, you know, because it's fertilized. So it's like, oh, well, the egg is fertilized. So thus it is the woman's responsibility because it's in her, it's in, it's in their body now. I mean, okay, I guess. I mean, I, I've always been bothered by it. It just, it just never set set well with me that argument with the whole life because of that conception because it it just doesn't it just doesn't fit right to me. But as a whole, these things are kind of recent history. So you know, does abortion have its roots also in white supremacy? Of course it does. I think it really, really does. Has a lot of it, it, it holds some big roots on white supremacy because I think it has to do with some weird psychotic idea of like, you know, maintaining the white population and white women being baby making factors. I think there's there's some elements of that um, because, you know, the immigrant hordes are coming in, you know, that type of thing. So. Yeah. 
Um, it's the nature of it, of what I see. But um, and maybe there's some classes elements too. I think there's some classes elements that people can make an argument over. Um, but again, it doesn't go for uh, to show that you know women's autonomy is important. And it's under attack at this point by the Supreme Court, which, you know, as an institution has just become bonk, in my opinion. It's just, you know, I've already, I've argued the Supreme Court just actually just shouldn't exist in a way it exists, you know, because we, we shouldn't have judges that have life terms. I think that's ridiculous to me. Um, I think it's completely absurd to have uh, judges with life terms. It's totally absurd. Um to me, I think their position should be like senators, basically, like six year terms and then just get a new fucking judge. Um, no more of this life term shit. <laughs> um, I know that will create a contention to laws being created, but I think it's better and serves democracy better because having just these lifetime appointed judges, that's not a democracy at that point. You know, that's not a that's not a democracy that you're having. It's sort of a sort of pseudo hereditary position that you guys have or pseudo elected power for life system. I mean, it's not a democratic system if you have judges to have like life terms. So. In essence, this is sort of my quick video on the uh, on the matter and uh, just the recent news and stuff that's been going on over it. And how they, they really are trying to overturn Wolf versus Wade. It's, it, it's very clear that that's what they're trying to go for. The Mississippi law is trying to. They're really trying to go after Roe versus Casey. They're trying to really overturn those laws in a lot of these southern states. Because, again, most of these people, their anti-abortion ideology comes from, you know, in these states, 100 times 10, it comes from their misreading of biblical scripture. And propaganda, uh, right-wing evangelical propaganda stuff, and uh, maybe a tad bit of some white supremacy. Um, I think mostly add all that through to a blender. I think it's correct. Like, wh like white supremacy is involved because you know these white folks realize, oh shit, especially in the U.S. Oh crap, our population is you know evangelical Christian population is diminishing. Now, their attempt to go after sex workers is another whole nother can of worms, which I think I'll do a video on later on, on that situation, because um, I think that that has a deep rooted history in puritanical, bizarre relationships about sexuality and sex in that nature. Um, but anyhow, I'll leave it here, folks. Um. All I got to say is solidarity. Um, I got We got a hold solidarity with some women, with a lot of women, actually, all women. And because um, it's very clear that they're, they're trying to, they're really just, it's all about going after women, good women's autonomy and controlling them, their bodies and punishing them, you know, for engaging in sexual activity that's not basically enamored to, to basically reproduction. So, I have a whole thing about reproduction in a second, to which I have a, a lot of issues in terms of, like, the perception, because it's like, well, look at it, man, we're, we're supposed to reproduce and, you know, have kids, and I, you know, I always look to myself and I say this, like, listen, 